New Mexico grass tells the story of cannabis in the land of enchantment. From the Llano Estacado to Shiprock, and from the Sangre to Cristos, down the Rio Grande and past Mesilla, the story of New Mexico is alive with culture and wisdom, and cannabis has long been a part of that tale. Please join us as we sit down with our friends and neighbors across this great state, and let's learn what they have to say. This meeting is being recorded. Hmm. All right, folks. Mr. President, I am directed to inform the Senate that the House... Wow, Miss Naranjo reads off the message from the House. This is quickly what's going on. The Senate Committee of the Whole has just closed, where the whole Senate voted as a committee on HP2. They voted to pass, 23-19. Now it moves back to the main Senate floor, where they vote again as a Senate. The vote should be there. It should pass. I think we are about to get legal cannabis in the state of New Mexico. Let's see what's let's see what's going on next. So hopefully we're we're going to capture it here live as it happens. Oh, pins and needles right now. Has been referred House Bill 2 as amended as set under consideration and report same with recommendation that it do pass as amended. Respectfully submitted Senator Mimi Stewart chair. Senator Stewart. Move the adoption of the committee report. Senators, we have a motion to adopt the committee report. See no objection. The committee report has been adopted. All right. Parliamentary procedure, going through it. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Unanimous consent. We go to that order of business announcements and miscellaneous. That order of business, Senator Worth. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Now being 11.59 a.m., I move we adjourn until 12.01 p.m. The Senate will come to order. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the rules be suspended and that the journal show all those present in this morning session are present in this afternoon session. I'm sure all this means a lot. I have no clue what's going on. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the rules be suspended and that the record show that the journal has been read in full and approved subject to revision and approval of the Judiciary Committee. There is no objection. It is so ordered. Senator Worth. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So we're going to go to third reading our Sergeant Arms and handing out a supplemental calendar. Third reading. This is it. Uh, it will be on House Bill, House Bill 2 is three times amended, and that will be uh, Senators Duhigg and Senator Lopez. I will be doing that bill. So with that, Mr. President, unanimous consent, we go to that order of business. Third reading of legislation, and I yield to Senators... Lopez and Duhigg, or Duhigg and Lopez, however they'd like to do it, or House Bill 2 is three times amended. Senators, we're on that order of business. Third reading of legislation, and just a reminder to place your phones on mute, and if you're participating via Zoom, to ensure that your mic is on mute, and when you speak, have your camera on, please. Also, if any individual was participating in their office by Zoom, and it is now on the floor, make sure that you've disconnected off of the Zoom in your office. With that, I'll yield to Senator Duhigg. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask the unanimous consent of the, all, of the Senate that the record show that all action for placing House Bill 2 as three times amended um, on final passage has been taken and that it is now subject to debate, amendment, or substitution. Seeing no objection, Senator Duhigg to explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a bill that has been uh, rewritten and then amended and then rewritten and rewritten again. Um, and if this bill does pass this body this evening, uh, this, this will not be the end of the journey for cannabis regulation in New Mexico. It, it will be the beginning. Um, uh, but I, be, because I know that there are, there are going to be a lot of additional improvements in the future going forward. But what we have now in House Bill 2 is a solid framework uh, to be able to make a change in our state that is a long time coming. And I want to thank all of the, the legislators and the advocates who have spent years and years working on uh, this issue. Um, 
the, the House sponsors, uh, Chairman Martinez, uh, Representative Romero, and Chairman Armstrong. Um, in, in addition to, I know many other legislators who have, have, who have worked on this for years and years. And I want to thank all the members of this body who have you know, vigorously debated this issue, um, really been incredibly thoughtful about it. Uh, and I think that the bill that we have before us now is better because of that attention and that input from the members of this body. Uh, no matter no matter how what, what their position on the bill was, um, and with that, Mr. President, I will yield to Senator Lopez. Senator Lopez. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and um, thank you, Senator Duhigg. Um, just to add, maybe just a few words more to what Senator Duhigg mentioned. Um, you know, it's thankful um, and grateful to those who've come before us. Mr. President, I remember uh, being on this floor when Senator Cisco McSorley sat in that back chair where Senator Ivy Soto was sitting, and we had many a discussion, debate, and conversation, whatever you want to call it, with regards to cannabis and the legalization back in the day. And of course, in judiciary, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, members of the, the Senate, you know, we, we had many a long discussion also in Senate Judiciary. Um, I've been on there during my, my tenure here in, in the Senate. And then um, Senator Ortiz y Pino has also been a stalwart in bringing forward legislation that we've also had, um, again, in front of Senate Judiciary and have had uh, many a long discussion. So, Mr. President, you know, we are here at this point in time um, where uh, with those who've come together working on for what was presented in the past and to where we are today, I too say and agree that um, you know there's still more uh, I know that we will do. Um, as Chairman Martinez mentioned earlier today and in some of our other meetings that we've had, you know we still have an opportunity to come forward with the funds to see what we do with them, how do we direct the monies, but at least this gives us the framework from where we can begin. So I still look forward, Mr. President, members of the Senate, to an opportunity for us to have uh, much more uh, perspective, input um, as to how we set up the funds, truly look as to how we um, offer opportunity for everyone in our communities. So with that, Mr. President, um, I'll give the floor back to Senator Duhigg. Senator Duhigg. And Mr. President, uh, to the extent that there there is is more debate to be had, we we stand for for debate. Senators, we are debating House Bill Two as three times amended. Anyone wish to debate? Senator Pirtle. Senator Pirtle's going to say. Let's see what he Senator says. Senator Pirtle. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. President. I don't need the sponsor to yield. You know, you know I, I just think, think I want to point out to the body. body that um, you know, we had a 60-day legislative session. Myself and two other Republican colleagues were called into the governor's office. And we were told that we were going to work together, come up with a piece of legislation that would be bipartisan. And what transpired, Mr. President, was absolutely the opposite of that. Not contacted, not communicated with, not brought in. And so, what, what you're going to end up with is, is, is exactly what everybody wanted, is a partisan piece of legislation that is, really, it's probably one of the most horribly written pieces of legislation that I've ever read. Oh, boy. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Peter Cobnot up in Ledge Council, who did some amazing work on my bill and did uh, awesome work. And he actually had the bill out. I put the request in Tuesday because I had not received any message from the governor. He had the bill out by Thursday. And yet, as a legislative body who's supposed to be independent from the governor, we were called in and we had the bill at 9 p.m. the day before the session. And, you know, my biggest fear isn't that we're passing a horrible piece of legislation. I think what's most disappointing to me is the destruction of the legislature that we've witnessed here. 
We should be so lucky. The legislature has been destroyed. The legislative process has been destroyed. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not the case. But anyway. The buzzword we've been hearing is bullying. We all know what happened. People were pressured, pushed, pressed, put in a corner to vote a certain way. Why? Because if you don't, we all know what's going to happen. Is that the legislature you want to be a part of? That sure as hell is not the legislation legislator I want to be a part of. Uh oh. I want, I want to be a part, part of a legislator, legislature, that legislature that says, you know what, regardless of your party, you bring a good piece of legislation, we're going to look at it, we're going to read it, we're going to treat it with respect. Basically, what we've seen here today is, well, I like Senator Pearl's bill, it's the best bill, but he's a Republican, he's evil. And, and then, then, Mr. President, he wondered why... He said it. <laughs> why do we not come over and work with you? No, just on kidding. The side of the aisle? Because, because this is how you're treated when you work across the aisle. I put my neck out? out? Oh, he's going to... He, he's got the... Sh I, he's got the floor. I guess he's going to... He's going to give a speech. body is supposed to be about coming across the aisle. But this is how... He should get his hand out of his pocket. across the aisle. As a public because speaking coach, get like your hand out of your pocket. Who was taken out and, and constantly worked across the aisle. So you want to preach and get on your soapbox and talk about how, well, why can't Republicans vote for this? One, we're not included. Two, our ideas are rejected. Feelings are hurt. And the amendment is rejected just because of the sponsor. So, so what, what have we learned, learned from the special, special session? session? This guy's butt hurt big time. That we don't, we don't work as an independent body. body. We, we don't care, care about good legislation. legislation. I, I sure do. do. And, and we, we all know that, that there's, there's the nuclear, nuclear option and we could do that. that. I could do that right now. now. But, but does that, that benefit, benefit the citizens of New Mexico? No. So, Mr. President, I'm going to take the high road today. Awesome. Because I think I could force the issue. I think we could force the issue of coming up with good policy because that's what I care about. I don't care about credit. I don't care about having my name on a freaking piece of legislation that nobody's going to remember whenever I'm rotting in my grave. Oh, man. You think anybody's going to care that I pass He's still talking. <laughs> Years from now. Come on, big boy, get it over with. But you know what I care about is the fact that the legislature is dead. Three independent branches of government no longer exist. Oh, again, we should be so lucky. Don't tease. We have one branch of government. I think that's the scariest part of what we're doing here today. And, and I think that's the biggest thing that I, I, hope I hope the public picks, picks up from this, that, that the governor and the democratically controlled body had an opportunity to pass cannabis during the 60-day if they had just worked across the aisle. I was willing to. I was willing to stick my neck out, get emails from my district, how dare you do this, but I want good policy. So if this is what it's going to look like moving forward, I don't, I don't know, know that this is somewhere that I want to be a part of. Are you saying you're going to leave us? Are you threatening to leave us? Bills don't go through that we just call a special session and, and force things through and press people and bully people into voting in a way that they don't want to. Oh, boy. Because we have to get our way. You voted no, right? I'm sure that's how you wanted to. This bill doesn't take effect until April 1st of 2022. Unfortunately. We'll have ample time to fix all the horrible sections within the bill. Please do. That we laid out beautifully. But you know, it's 8.30, Yeah, 8.25. Oh, poor guy. I guess my beautiful children. Yeah, boy, do that. That's what's important. Absolutely. 
calling us in on Easter week. And that's a horrible cannabis bill that wasn't agreed upon, wasn't worked between parties, wasn't promi the promises were not kept, lies were made. Rough world, and if that's what you guys want to do, and that's what the body wants to do, you know, vote for House Bill 2. Please. But I don't, but I don't think, think that's representative of what the legislature is supposed to stand for. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pirtle. Doesn't sound like he wants to be in the Senate much longer. I hope his I hope his district pays attention to that. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask the body to take this historic step tonight. Here we go. Pass this legislation. Mr. President, I move that House Bill 2 as four times amended or three times amended? Four times. Four times amended. Uh, do now pass, and I ask for a roll call vote. Boom, here we go. This is it, folks. Ah! Oh, man, here we go. All right, 2319 was what it came out of the committee. I expect the same thing here. Senator Baca. Senator Baca, no. Senator Brand. Senator Brand, no. Senator Bird. Senator Bird, no. Senator Campos. This woman is a machine. Senator Candelaria. Lenore, you're the best. Senator Candelaria, yes. Senator Cervantes. Senator Cervantes, Senator Diamond, Senator Diamond, no, Senator Duhigg, Senator Duhigg, yes, Senator Gallegos. No, no ma'am, I'd like to explain my vote. Senator Gallegos, no, Senator Gonzalez, no, Senator Gonzalez, no, Senator Griggs, Senator Griggs, no, Senator Hamlin, Senator Hamlin, yes, Senator Hemphill, Senator Hemphill, yes, Senator Hickey. Senator Engel. Senator Engel, no. Senator Ivy Soto. Senator Ivy Soto, yes. Senator Jaramillo. Senator Jaramillo, yes. Senator Kernan. Senator Kernan, no. Senator Lopez. Senator Lopez, yes. Senator McKenna. Yes. Senator McKenna, yes. Senator Moores. Senator Moores, no. Senator Munoz. Senator Munoz. Senator Neville. Senator Neville, no. Senator O'Neill. Senator O'Neill, yes. Senator Ortiz Pino. Senator Ortiz Pino, yes. Senator Padilla. Senator Padilla, yes. Senator Pinto. No. Senator Pinto, no. Senator Pirtle. Senator Pirtle, no. Senator Pope. Senator Pope, yes. Senator Rodriguez. Senator Rodriguez, yes. Senator Sanchez. Yeah. Senator Sanchez, no. Oh. Senator Smitties. No. Nope. Senator Sevilla Lopez. Yes. Senator Sevilla Lopez, yes. Senator Scherer. Senator Shendo. Senator Shendo passes. Senator Souls. Senator Souls, yes. Senator Stepanix. Senator Stepanix, yes. Senator Steinborn. Senator Steinborn, yes. Senator Stewart. Senator Stewart, yes. Senator Tallman. Senator Tallman, yes. Senator Worth. Senator Worth, yes. Senator Woods. No. Senator Woods, no. Senator Shendo. Senator Shendo, yes. Here we go, folks. It's about to get official up in here. By a vote of 22 in the affirmative, 22. 15 in the negative, House Bill 2 has four times amended, has passed the Senate. Senator Gallegos to explain his vote. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity. We got it! Uh, this is my only second session. We got it! I'm sure this guy's a great speaker. <laughs> He's getting tuned out. We got it, folks! It just passed the Senate. What they say? 22 15, I think. Whatever. It's done. It's legally done. It now goes to the governor. Of course, she's going to sign it. Roll them up. Light them up. Smoke them up. Inhale. Exhale. It's going to pass. It did pass. This is historic. To those legislators, Javier Martinez, Andrea Romero, 
all the others in the Senate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is amazing. Thank you, first off, for taking the time to look at the incredible difficulties and negative externalities that have been caused by the ridiculous war on drugs and for ending it here in this state. Expungement is next. Make that happen. Secondly, thank you for creating this industry, the industry that doesn't exist now that will exist in the future. It's going to create opportunities for entrepreneurs. It's going to create jobs for people that want to go to work. And from your perspective, it's going to create tax revenue for politicians. It's win, win, win. Everyone benefits from this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Worth. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate table and definitely all bills remaining on the President's table on the calendar and committee except the bills in the Judiciary Committee for enrolling and grossing. See no objection. So ordered. Senator Lopez. Mr. President, I move that the Senate sign and die. See no objection. The Senate has signed and die. That's it, folks. <laughs> That's all she wrote. Historic moment right there. You watched it here on New Mexico Grass. I mean, I say live. I was live. This video is not going to be live, but you're watching it with us. We got our law. We got the micro business law. We got legal cannabis in New Mexico. You got a homegrown option in there. This is great, folks. Of course, this bill is not perfect. Of course, there are going to be things that are going to have to be fixed, changed, amended, whatnot. Of course, like there is no such thing as a perfect piece of legislation. Let me stop my turn here. There's no such thing as that. There is no perfect legislation. Um, there's no way that they're going to get a bill out of there that everyone is going to agree upon. I, I was giving Cliff Pearl a hard time. He's a good guy. He doesn't like the bill. He's got problems with the process and whatnot. Totally understandable. This is a big, big deal. But it's happening anyway, despite the objections of Cliff Pirtle and the other Republicans, and some of the Democrats for that matter, this is happening. It's happening nationwide, slowly, but look, New York did it. New York has legal cannabis. I lived in New York 18 years. If New York has legal cannabis, then guess what? The business climate of this country is about to change in a big way in its attitude towards cannabis. It has gotten a lot better. You're seeing a lot more positive articles about cannabis in the business press as there's been a lot more money made. It's growing a lot. There's a lot more revenue and business opportunities. But now that New York, the Empire State, has legalized it, this is big. This is big business, big investors, big banks, big opportunity. And once that starts flowing, that's kind of like the hundred monkey, right? Once that gets there, it, there's going to be a kind of a tidal wave of, of movement and activity. So when will this flow over into DC so that we can have legal cannabis writ large across these, across this country? I don't know, but soon. Soon is the answer. So that we've done it now in New Mexico. This is what the this is the prep time that those entrepreneurs like myself and others who are going to be participating in the state in the legal cannabis business. This is the prep time we need so that when it goes legal on a federal basis, we've got our, our operations down. We've got our networks down. We know what our business model is and we can begin to expand it and leverage our strengths with all the sun that we have here, all the knowledge and the experience that we have here in terms of farming and agriculture, all the different um, low-cost facilities and land and all the, the benefits that you can have by coming to New Mexico and starting a cannabis grow operation. We have more sun here than almost any state in the Union. We have more wind. Where I am in Curry County is one of the windiest places in the whole country. So what does that mean? Wind generation is great. So we have lots of solar wind. We have lots of ways to keep your cost down. The land here is cheap. This is a fantastic state to do cannabis business, a fantastic state. So as it goes and grows to a national basis, we're only going to benefit even more as a state. But whatever, that's in the future. Right now, let's focus on what we got. We got legal cannabis in the state of New Mexico. Oh, I never thought I'd say that, but here we are. Thank you again to the state, uh, to the legislature in New Mexico for the special session. Thank you very much uh, to Governor uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham. Thank you for your efforts here. You got the special session done. 
you accomplished a big, big thing in this state. And you're going to see a lot of entrepreneurs participating, a lot of economic development, a lot of growth happening in your state because of these efforts. Big thumbs up to you. You deserve all the credit you get out of this. I hope you're lighting up a joint right now and enjoying yourself and, and relaxing in this moment. I'm going to do the same thing soon. We made it. We got it. We made it. Congratulations to, from all of us here at New Mexico Grass to all of you. Absolutely congratulations and thanks to everyone. Thanks for joining us here. We're not done here. We're going to keep interviewing people. We're going to keep covering the cannabis industry, particularly from the micro business angle, talking to legislators, talking to business people, talking to normal citizens and following this issue as it develops. We, we got the legislation. This is one piece. There's other steps to follow. So we'll keep updating you here. Stay tuned to us and uh, see you soon.